family, I need you to understand when game is being run on you. The white authorities understand that they cannot stop this uprising. They've tried, but they're also terrified of what this uprising represents. People deciding that they're no longer going to allow the enforcement arm of white supremacy to assault people and to murder them, to push them around, and to deprive them of their rights, especially black people. This is who it's about. This is about controlling black people and keeping the status quo in place. What the white authorities thought that they were going to do, and they tried everything. Uh, let's try to... to soften up the image of the thugs in blue that didn't work well um let's try to get some celebrities out there that didn't work well we'll have some of our black bootlicks in politics that didn't work how about some hip-hoppers that didn't work we'll demonize them that didn't work we'll lie about they've been doing everything that they can to try to stymie short circuit or to undermine support for this uprising because they are terrified of what it represents what it represents is black people challenging the enforcement arm of white supremacy and without the enforcement arm of white supremacy to harass black people to kill black people and most importantly of all without the enforcement arm being seen as legitimate and without people being willing to challenge it whenever you have the politicians who write their laws that are nothing more than codifying the privilege of white supremacy the privilege of the white elite and to a certain degree the white rank and file if people are not going to challenge that, then they're safe. But when people say, hey, we're going to challenge it, and we're not scared of your goons with guns either. They don't bother us at all. Now white supremacy has a real problem. They're going to go from people saying that we're going to take what is ours to people actually doing it. Because the only deterrent that you have are the goons with guns. And the people are showing, well, these guys, we don't see them as legitimate. And we're going to keep pushing against them. And what they've shown is there's more people than there are goons with guns. The people realize, at least they've been reminded now, there's more of us than there are of them. This is a serious problem for white supremacy because it's spread nationwide and it's not stopping. And all their typical propaganda maneuvers aren't working. And the usual suspects ain't working. So now what's happened is, first you had the state's attorney, the undercover white supremacist, who really hasn't been too undercover, Mike Freeman. First, he was forced to have to bring charges against one of these thugs, the chief murderer. But he made it third degree murder, which everybody let him know that is wrong. And he's sitting here deciding that he's going to drag his feet on charging the other three so that hopefully time will pass. And he can just say, well, there just wasn't enough because I say so. But not before he allows his partner in crime the Hennepin County Medical Examiner, to put out a so-called preliminary autopsy, which of course says, why, uh, you guys, didn't you know that he didn't die of asphyxia? Now, they thought that was going to work. They thought that there was going to be that phony baloney, made up, completely fraudulent Emmy preliminary autopsy report. And the people would see that and go, oh, well, we didn't see what we thought we saw. They thought they were going to pull some Jedi mind trick. It only made things worse. So now you've got the Emmy and the DA and the police robbed of their legitimacy. The public looks at them and says, you're not legitimate. Only ones left are the politicians and the judges. The white authorities could see where the trend was going. So they had to do something, something big, something flashy, something that people were going to feel like they got what they wanted when it was actually a bait and switch. Hence... Mike Freeman has decided that he's going to surrender the case, and the governor is handing it off to no other than the Attorney General of Minnesota, Keith Ellison. Now, Jason and I, in our recent joint broadcast, we were telling you that if Keith Ellison really wanted this case, he could have lobbied for it, but he didn't really want it. And truth be told, it's not a good idea for him to have it. We have no respect for Keith Ellison because Keith Ellison has no respect for black people. Keith Ellison is a little opportunist. He's a little snake in the grass. And he's already letting black folks know, um, you shouldn't expect much from me. Oh, we're going to take it nice and slow with this investigation. Well, I'm worried about what people might say. I'm worried about what people might say. Yeah, those people being Nancy Pelosi on the one hand and those white big money contributors on the other. Keith Ellison still has delusions that he's going to be president one day. That's what he's doing. That's, as far as he's concerned, he plays his cards right. And the white establishment powers that be, they're going to, he's going to cement for everybody that he's on the team. That's what this is really about. This is about 
white power attempting to find some end run around doing what the people are demanding. Because they already lost huge ground when Mike Freeman was forced to bring charges against Derek Chauvin. They lost big ground with that. He had to bend his stiff neck to the people. And he wasn't going to bring any charges until things got turned up. Then he was forced to say, okay, here's some charges. Because he wanted to slow walk a no bill is what he wanted. He wanted to slow walk an announcement of no charges. I guess he figured something else would knock George Floyd off the headlines and it just didn't happen. And then the uprisings began to spread nationwide. Oh, I'm sure they got all kinds of phone calls saying, well, you you guys should do something. We're not saying indict anybody, but we're saying do something. And he was like, yeah, we'll do something short of actually doing the right thing. And that didn't work. So now we got this sham going on this ploy. And how did it come about? Because you had a Minneapolis political delegation who sent a letter to the governor. And in this letter, it says, We are writing to request that the case against the officers who killed George Floyd, or may have been otherwise culpable in his death, be transferred to the jurisdiction of the Attorney General's office. But they wanted to make it very clear, this isn't coming from us. This wasn't our idea. We're not really wanting to do this. This is not something we actually want to do. And that is a through line that you've seen with this whole affair. This is white supremacy trying to dig in its heels to give an example and hopefully try to get some public support. That's what they were hoping for. We're digging in our heels. Well, none of us actually wants to do this. This is just some niggers making some noise. And, you know, we really don't actually want to do this. And they're making it loud and clear, this political delegation. Their letter says it loud and clear because instead of them saying this is what they want, instead of them saying we have lost faith in Mike Freeman. Instead, they say, unfortunately, our constituents, especially constituents of color. There we go with that phrase. You see, it's the constituents, it's the people of color who have lost faith in Mike Freeman, not this political delegation. So apparently they have no opinion on the matter. They're just reflecting what their people of color constituents say. So they don't say black people. They want to make it very clear, well, we're talking about everybody here. This is about everybody, not about black people. And they're already laying the groundwork. So constituents of color have lost faith in Mike Freeman, but the politicians writing this letter, they still maintain full faith. About the only half-truth that they told was when they pointed out that Freeman's press conference showed him as seeming ill-prepared. And he did point to some unseen evidence that might exonerate the officers. Well, they say that this further ruptured the trust that the DA was going to need, they're supposed to be having. But the problem is this man had no trust from the black community to begin with. And that's who really raised the most hell about this. That's who really raised the noise and put the heat on the politicians, the black community. They didn't have any faith in this bastard. They're trying to act as if, oh, well, they've always trusted this guy the hell they have. They just didn't have a way to vote this scumbag out of office because they don't represent a large enough number of the electorate. But it's in this delegation's very next paragraph where they get to the heart of the matter. They give the confession here, albeit obliquely. Given the present circumstances, that means all these black folks who don't turn things up nationwide, given the fact that the police are catching pure hell, and the cops who are not having to run with their tails between their legs, they get in that work in the streets, which means that they're expecting that this is what's going to happen to the police in every encounter. You call yourself trying to bully black people in their homes or in their yards or in the streets, you're going to get that work. Given this growing threat... We believe that this case should be handled in a way that maximizes public trust and gives confidence to the public that justice will be done. Now, they went ahead and made a Freudian slip here. They didn't say that the case should be handled so as to maximize public trust. They said it should be handled in a way. This is pure manipulation right here. They came up with the admission and didn't even know it. 
we're not actually looking for justice. We just want it to, we just want to give the appearance that to the public that see, we're making some moves here. We're doing a couple of things and, oh, you should have faith in the system. Whose system? Our system. The case should be handled in a way that gives the perception, that gives the misimpression that why, why there are some honest white folks and a couple of bootlicks, people of color behind them who are trying to do what's right. This is all about public trust and confidence. I told you that without any sort of belief in the system or those who are supposed to be carrying it out, then the system has no authority. The enforcement arm of white supremacy has been robbed of its authority because the public's looking at them and openly saying, you guys are not legitimate. If you don't trust something, if you don't have confidence in it, that's because you don't think it's legitimate. That's the very definition of illegitimate. And so they're having to address this because without, without the public seeing the police as legitimate, then they will not obey anything the police says because that's the only authority the police have. That's what this is about. This is an exercise in trying to regain the public's trust and confidence without actually doing what the public wants. We, are, we have to give the impression that we're doing what the public wants without actually doing it. That's what that sentence says. Because we got to con these rubes into being obedient again. Right now, they're being completely and thoroughly disobedient. Police can't really make any arrests because the public's yanking the cops off of people whenever the, people, whenever the cops try to arrest somebody. Hell, under these circumstances, imagine if the people decide the 1% can know of the white elite, is what I should say, they can no longer keep their ill-gotten gains. Behind every great fortune lies an even greater crime, and now the people are here to bring justice to those criminals. Who's going to protect the Bill Gates and the Warren Buffetts and the Ted Turners and the rest of the moneyed white elites from the wrath of the people? Who's going to protect them from the people coming to take what's theirs? They won't be deterred by your goons with guns just because they got badges. That badge will mean a damn thing. And if the badge means nothing, that means the system that gave those thugs the badge means nothing to the people. Understand, you got to see the system the way that your enemy does so you can understand what scares him most and then make his worst nightmare come true. Now, to continue, the letter says, under the circumstances, that means all these black folks who was getting turned up who you can't control anymore. Transferring the case to the attorney general's office would be one of the most decisive actions that you could take. Well, for what reason? It's to get justice, right? This is about justice. I mean, surely they're going to say this would be one of the most decisive actions you could take to achieve justice. To make sure justice is done, no, instead the goal is to calm public anger. Now remember when I told you that whenever people talk to you, whatever it is they say first, that's what's at front of mind for them. Analyze what they say, whatever comes out of their mouth first, that's what they're thinking about primarily. And they just got through linking these two together. All these niggers out here who are causing all of these problems and we can't control them and it's just getting worse and worse and these niggers are showing that they're going to bring down the system by hand. We got to do something big and flashy. Well, justice would be big and flashy. Punishing the white supremacists who kill black people would be big and flashy. So that's what you're going to do, right? Nope. Instead, what we need is a PR stunt to calm public anger. Punishing the white supremacists would do that, but that's not what they're talking about. They're simply talking about a fair process. Well, hell, every single one of these white thugs with badges who have murdered black people who have been either let off the hook by a DA who deliberately undermined his own prosecution or some thug DA who decided that he just wasn't going to prosecute altogether, they would, all, they would say in all instances, well, Darren Wilson, that was a fair process. Daniel Pantaleo, that was a fair process. Betty Shelby, that was a fair process, and on and on. Notice how none of them says that Michael Slager was a fair process. None of them points and says that was justice. You haven't heard any of these politicians say that Michael Slager getting 20 years behind, at least 20 years behind the slammer, that that was justice. They just slinked away and didn't want to say anything at all. Yeah, because that's something they don't want to reinforce. 
So when they say fair process, nobody's talking about punishment. All of a sudden, the word justice doesn't feature in this sentence. To continue, this letter says, Attorney General Ellison has earned goodwill of Minneapolis residents through years of service to the city and is known and respected throughout the community. It is imperative to signal to our constituents as strongly and quickly as possible that the authorities are treating this case with the special attention it deserves. Now, first of all, they say imperative to signal to our constituents strongly and quickly as possible. In other words, got to do something big, got to do something flashy. We need to do something that's going to make a lot of noise and get attention. We have to do this now because the niggers, they're getting turned up and we can't control them. We got to show that we're treat, the authorities are treating this case with the special attention it deserves. Now, that's a problem right there. What happened to George Floyd wasn't special at all. It was not unique at all. It happens every damn day. That's the problem. It is quite typical. The murder of George Floyd was not extraordinary at all. It's normal for the thugs in blue. This is what they do day after day. It is not the George Floyd case that deserves special attention. It is all of these anti-black lynchings taking place, these murders of black people that deserve special attention. It is the systemic practice of murdering black people with impunity that needs special attention and punishment. But you notice what they're saying here. They're trying to limit, they're letting you know, this is just about George Floyd. We see this, it was a George Floyd murder. The fact that he got caught, you know, it just struck a chord with people. And we got to handle this as the PR issue that it is. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make a couple of headlines. We'll manufacture some headlines by saying that our house Negro, our little in-house bootlick, our team mascot, the Attorney General Keith Ellison, who just got through licking the governor's boots a few minutes ago, hoping for an endorsement when he tries to run, either when he tries to run for governor or when he tries to run for higher office or what have you. Let's get Keith Ellison in here. The fact that he's not white is going to be is going to be really good. He's a person of color. And we can tout that. And we can present that to all of these rampaging Negroes. And hopefully that's going to calm them down. It will calm these Negroes down. Calm all of this black anger. If we do some little bit of PR, we're going to do some ceremonial, phony, fake symbolism here. And they're going to see Keith Ellison and they're going to think, surely he wants justice, right? Surely he's going to give these guys the business. Surely he's going to drop the courthouse on them. Surely he is going to aggressively prosecute them with the charges they deserve. And if you believe that, you're a damn fool. But this is how, the, this is how you got these politicians. Even now, they are digging in their heels. That's what this letter is about. Okay, we tried to baffle them with BS, phony baloney, completely made up, lying preliminary autopsy reports. That didn't fool them. That didn't con them. They weren't taken in by that. So instead, what we're going to try now is we're going to try to dazzle them with diamonds. Even though those diamonds are covered in crap, give them a nice glittering distraction. Oh, we're bringing in, we're going to bring in Keith Ellison. How many prosecutions has this guy won again? How many successful prosecutions has he had? I'll wait. But we're going to bring in Keith Ellison. And oh, we're getting serious now. We are responding to the people. We're resp We have heard your anger. We have heard you. Here we are a freaking week later. Oh, we've heard you. We've heard you. This is what they're trying. We're going to dazzle them with diamonds. Well, the dimwits and the gullible will be dazzled. The people with an IQ higher than their shoe size will not. But they're making it very clear. This is about containment. They're trying to contain the changes that the uprising is forcing on them. They did not want to set the precedent of a black man gets killed. The public says indict. The DA says no. And the public just slinks off. That's supposed to be the pattern. They thought they conditioned people to that. Instead, they said, to hell with that. Time to get turned up. And now the DA, after days of this, he feels the heat literally from all those fires being set and goes, well, I'm, I'm announcing 
this is the fastest we've ever brought charges. Yeah, because the people literally lit a fire under his behind. Literally. But he didn't say he didn't give the right answer. All of this third degree and only one of them is like, nah, we see what you're trying to do, you scumbag. In that case, the uprising continues. Third degree murder for the killer who tortured a man to death, strangling him over the course of 10 minutes. Third degree murder, that's all. And maybe, maybe five years. Remember I told you about five years being white supremacy's maximum sentence? That's what he was trying to engineer. Mohammed Noor got 12 years, but that's because he killed a white woman. You better believe third degree murder for this chauvin animal, five years tops with half off for good behavior. And when the people saw the con coming down the pike this time, what happened was the black media mobilized and you guys mobilized right behind us. And next thing you know, people are going, they got educated, they got informed. Wrong answer is what they said. You know, that's supposed to be first degree murder. You know, it's supposed to be first degree People weren't going for the okie doke so now they're trying the rope a dope. If you won't go for the okie doke go. Let's see if we can get you with the rope a dope instead. And finally, this lying letter finishes with just an insult. They're going to demonstrate that all Minnesotans are equal in the eyes of the law. How can you demonstrate something that's never been? Black people in Minnesota have never been treated equally to white ones, and white ones have never been treated as badly as black people. You cannot say that Minnesotans are equal in the eyes of the law. You can say that you will establish that Minnesotans are equal in the eyes of the law. You have to admit that it's never been the case, but they don't. Instead, they lie and say, we're going to show that everybody's equal in the... No, get off it. Stop it. You're not fooling anyone but the stupid, and nobody's stupid here. But this is the letter that they wrote. And it's peppered and littered and riddled and run through with all kinds of duplicitous language, and even though they didn't mean to, they were giving away exactly what the game was here. We're trying to calm people down with a PR show. And we want to make it very clear that this George Floyd case, the way that we're handling this one, this ain't going to be the new normal. Oh, this is a special case given the present circumstance. Yeah, because these Negroes out here on the streets are ripping the city a new rear end. They're ripping the city a new butthole nationwide. And the cops are getting that business coast to coast. And it's only going to get worse for them. And that being the case, we got a calm public anger and people aren't obeying the enforcement arm of white supremacy, which has deprived them completely and thoroughly of their authority. So we have to do something that will restore public trust and confidence. In other words, public obedience, which is what authority means. Obedience. The public's obedience must be restored. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see if they'll fall for this con with Keith Ellison. Let's see if we can get him to sell the soap. Okay, sure. He might, we'll have him bring some charges, but the end result should be the same. It must reinforce white supremacy, especially anti-black murder being legal. It must reinforce that. We can't have any changes to that because we're going to be needing that rule, especially using it a lot as the numbers of white people in the country dwindle. And when you look at who it was who wrote this letter, the first guy whose name you see on there is some guy named Fui Li. And this guy is a Hmong representative in Minneapolis. I don't know if this man's had anything to do with the black community. I would imagine not. But his name is at the very top of this thing. So what does that tell you? This thing, they couldn't even get one of their black bootlicks to be to get top billing. They're not even hiding. The, no, this didn't come from black folks. This is just something that we cooked up behind closed doors. We're going to have Keith Ellison here to rubber stamp it for us so we can have him as our front Negro and he's going to pretend as if he's in charge when he ain't in charge of a damn thing. But it's not until you look at the very bottom of this lying letter when you see some names that let you know if you had any doubts that the fix was in. First of all, Mike Freeman went ahead and gave his endorsement to this. Now, wasn't this letter supposed to be criticizing him? No. 
He knows exactly what the con here is. So Mike Freeman went ahead and endorsed it. And right underneath his name, Representative Ilhan Omar, a woman who has shown absolutely no respect for black people in this country whose roots go back to the killing fields of the American South. If you're not a black immigrant, especially an East African black immigrant, she ain't got nothing for you. She's an immigrant representative, not a black one. This woman couldn't even bring herself to represent a fellow Somali. Mohammed Noor was getting railroaded for no damn reason, just for doing his job, and Ilhan Omar, all of a sudden she forgot where her Twitter fingers went to. All of a sudden she didn't have nothing to say. And, of course, right underneath that, a name that shouldn't be showing up at all because this woman has absolutely nothing to do with state politics any more than Ilhan Omar, Senator Klobuchar. Yeah, this is part of her redemption tour. This is part of her trying to fix her image. She's trying to do a little image rehabilitation on herself. Because she sees that every, the reasons that she failed to get the presidential nomination, the reason that she failed to get any support and she kept getting challenged across the board because of her prosecutor's record. Now she's realizing hmm, this is going to be a long term problem for me. I better jump and, and put my name on this because I need to say that I signed the letter saying that Keith Ellison should take over the investigation. And she'll sit there and say everything short of that Mike Lee is a racist snake in the grass, he's a piece of garbage, and that it's blatantly obvious that there is systemic racism in the Hennepin County DA's office and in prosecutors' offices across the country. She wouldn't say that. She was trying to reinforce the idea that you should believe and trust in a bunch of white supremacists with law degrees. Because she is one of them. So Amy Klobuchar is trying to figure out how she can do some image rehab. Putting her name on here, man, you look at the, at the scumbag, just as rogues gallery, who wrote this letter. You don't even need me to break it down for you. You should be able to look at that and say, okay, it's obvious the fix is in. Okay, This is just some more garbage. But I think that one of the most interesting things of all is when this letter was written. It's dated May 29th. May 29th, the exact same day that Mike Freeman gave his press conference saying that he was going to be bringing charges. And the same day that he timed it to coincide with that phony, fake, fraudulent, lying preliminary ME report the preliminary autopsy results, this was done deliberately on his part. You can see this was there. They're not even hiding it. This was plan B. Plan A is let's see if we can get away with a fake, weak third degree murder charge for only one of the four murderers. And then we're going to see if putting out the Emmys, this lying piece of propaganda, let's see if that calms them down. Let's see if that starts a counter narrative. Let's see if that demoralizes the uprising. Let's see if this takes the wind out of their sails. If they see that it says no proof that he died or strangulation, let's see how many people are gullible enough to go for it and just decide, okay, I guess the revolution's off. That's what they were trying to do. That didn't work. So at the same time that Mike Freeman and the lying Emmy were trying to do their little one-two propaganda two-step, at that same time, you had this delegation of Minnesota politicians and cutthroats who were putting together this letter as a just-in-case. Now, remember, last week, Keith Ellison was being asked by all these people... What are you going to do if you had the case? Well, I, I don't have the case. Well, if you did have the case, how would you handle it? Well, I really can't say, and um, I wouldn't want to prejudice the um, the process. And, um, well, you know, it's, it's very complicated, and, and these things are never easy. He didn't want to answer. He did not want to answer that question. He didn't want to... I'm not going to even do a thought exercise. No speculation. No giving my opinion. Uh, would I charge the others? Um, well, um, these things are difficult to answer. I'm not really sure. Uh, the investigation should be thorough, of course. Remember that word investigation. He kept throwing that thing around like Tic Tacs. 
Now we know why he was tap dancing around. There's no way in hell that he did not know about this. He had to have known that there was this effort going on behind the scenes that just in case Mike Freeman's little phony baloney press conference fails to calm down all these rowdy Negroes, in case the Emmys report that was going to come out right behind it failed to take any wind out of the sails of the uprising, well then, you know, you might be next up at back Keith oh yeah he had to have known it look at how many people signed this dang thing on Friday didn't Keith Ellison used to be a member of Congress his former fellow congressional colleagues Ilhan Omar and Amy Klobuchar both of them had their names on it no with this many politicians signing on to this thing ain't no way in hell that the Attorney General of the state wouldn't have heard about it so now you see why it was that last week Keith Ellison refused to answer any questions sounding just like Mike Freeman. It's because of the fact that he was going to get called in at some point as their backup. If the heat didn't die down over the weekend, then they were going to be announcing why we have heard the cry of the people and we're going to bring in Keith Ellison to bury this investigation, to bury this case. I mean, um, to carry out this investigation and, and see that justice is done. This is what's going on here, family. Don't let them fool you. Do not be conned. Keith Ellison is not here to help. Keith Ellison is only too aware that after the powers that be put him on notice, why we'll brand you an anti-Semite, don't you? We'll put that Farrakhan label on you. You better denounce him because, you know, we got, because Farrakhan's a good symbol that we can kick around. So just in case anybody starts talking to any of that black revolutionary empowerment stuff, any of that white supremacist stuff, we want you to certify that you are a Muslim condemning Farrakhan. Because, you know, we can't do it ourselves. It would look bad. So you better do it. Either that or you'll be in political doghouse the rest of your life. And here Keith Ellison is doing their bidding. Oh, yeah, he's going to do everything that he can to try to make sure that what Mike Freeman started, he finishes. The fix is in. Now, the good thing that's come out of all this is it does show this is what can be done if the people make it very clear that this is going to be the new normal. That's, that's what they're scared of. The longer this goes on, the more habit forming it becomes, because if it can happen once, it can happen again. And it would have been one thing if it was limited just to Minnesota, but it happened and started spreading nationwide. And that brings us to the second half of what's been going on today. You have had this concerted, across-the-board, organized effort by the white media, specifically CNN and MSNBC, though there are others, to try to figure out how they can pivot this to be something else. They started the drumbeat last week by trying to say, well, this isn't really about racism by the police or by the DAs. This isn't really about that. This is actually about the quarantine. See, the quarantine's what's made it worse. You had Fareed Zakaria saying that crap. Well, you know, yeah, racism's bad, but it's not new. It's the quarantine, and, and people are agitated right now, and, and because of all that, that's what it's about. In other words, they're trying to figure out how to pivot this to, this is all about the election, don't you know? Why? It's the election that matters. But MSNBC and CNN were also going overboard to push this group called Human Rights Campaign. Now, they're, why would you be talking to these guys when it comes to anti-black murders. Well, the reason that they're talking to him is because Human Rights Campaign is, as they put it, they are the largest civil rights organization for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer Americans. They've got this on their website. Human Rights Campaign envisions a world where lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people are embraced as full members of blah, 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 blah. That's who and what Human Rights Campaign are. And the white media has been bending over backwards today trying to give these guys attention and make it where they're going to be the spokespeople for this uprising. They're going to be the spokespeople for this movement. MSNBC kicked off their news day by talking to the head of this human rights campaign group, some guy called Alfonso David, and it's a classic white supremacist pivot maneuver 
He started off saying, oh, George Floyd, we've lost him, and other black people whose names we don't even know, there's too many to count. And this is Pride Month, and because of that, Pride Month came out of the Stonewall riots, and you should not forget about the LGBT and acceptance and setting a new tone for America, and just like that. Went ahead and started off, yeah, we'll go ahead and say a couple of small passing mentions of these black folks, and then after this, it's going to be pushing that LGBT agenda, because after all, um, all lives matter, all abuses matter, don't you know? Because after he did his pivot to talking about the gay community, well, after that, that was pretty much the remainder of that little segment. Which, of course, is the point that the white media wanted to make. That's what they're trying to do with the LGBT movement, calling them civil rights. They're going to be the new civil rights movement, right? Ain't that what Bayard Rustin said back in the 80s? Well, you know, the gays have supplanted the moral high ground that the Negro used to have. They're the forefront of the moral struggle, the gays. And how very much of a coincidence that Bayard Rustin himself was a homosexual too. So he got to sit there and have attention for being black and attention for being homosexual as well. He must have loved it. But interesting how the largest LGBT rights organization, whatever whatever honorific they bestowed on themselves, interesting how they ain't got nothing to say about racism within the LGBTQRSTUV community. They don't have a word to say about that. And this chump president of theirs, he didn't have anything to say about it either. This is going to be a group fighting for civil rights, just not black people's civil rights. That's all. Human rights campaign. See what they do? Whenever you got Black Lives Matters, next thing you know, turns out the founders of Black Lives Matter, D. Ray McKesson is an LGBT, and so are the founders of Black Lives Matter. And you know, this is actually not just about black rights. It's about gay rights and transgender rights and Palestinian rights and environmental rights. And it's all about menstruation rights. And it's about people for the ethical treatment of animal rights. That's what the goal is. Under white supremacy, the LGBT movement is used as a wedge. It's used as a means to dilute whatever energy black people are bringing to bear for our empowerment. Next thing you know, we got to find a way to turn it, to pivot it, to move it in another direction, to misdirect the energy. Oh, this, well, you know, there are other people who have been mistreated, not like us. Well, the fact they've been mistreated means it's the same. It's all the same thing. All lives matter, you know. All mistreatment matters, you know. All abuse in the society matters, you know. That's what they've been trying to do. They've been trying to make it where, okay, we've given air to those niggers. Instead, now we're going to go ahead and get some LGBT folk out here. We're going to go ahead and do the next phase like we always do. Come on, guys. You know the drill, how we always do. This is the pivot that they're trying to do. And it's organized because they're doing this across the board. You can tell the freaking memo went out. All of these white media organizations doing the same damn thing. Yeah, the memo went out. Time to pivot, guys. But they're trying to find a way to say that this uprising is due to other factors. It's not about anti-black murders that have galvanized the former slaves. What this is actually about is the quarantine. And it's actually about the election. And it's actually about the economy. And it's actually about this, that, and a third. Yeah, but it's not about all these anti-black killings because we're not trying to change that. See... Kvetching about LGBT social acceptance does not change white supremacy. Trying to wring your hands about how do we get niggers to be very enthused about voting this November, that doesn't change or challenge or diminish or undermine white supremacy. So that's the reason they want to go in that direction. This is about changing the subject. And they're trying to inject anything into it they can. Just make some noise. This is a classic strategy of white supremacy. If you're not able to hijack the conversation, then try to disrupt it and anything you can to try to shout it down or create chaos or what have you. Pull a fire alarm, whatever you got to do. They sent out their bootlicks, their political whores, and their hip-hop idiots to try to see if they could take control of the conversation away from the grassroots and that failed. So now what they're trying to do is they're going to plan D. Plan D is dilute. 
That is a classic of propaganda. There are two ways that you can mislead the masses. The first way is if you can try to get the people to all believe in one lie, one singular line of bull. So you push the lie and you push it hard as you can and see how if you can get the majority of people to go for it. That's one way to mislead the masses. But the other way is just throw everything at them. Just put up a wall of noise. Talk about the environment, talk about feminism, talk about LGBT, QRST, UV, whatever. Talk about this, that, and a third. Talk about the price of rice in China, but do not talk about challenging and punishing white supremacy. That you do not talk about. Do not talk about tangibles for black people in America, especially the former slaves. Do not talk about that. That you don't talk about. We're, instead, we're just going to keep the conversation, just make it as general as possible. Flood the conversation with noise, white noise, chaos. That's what they're attempting to do now. We're going to bring in every Tom, Dick, and Harry because we're trying to, okay, we're trying to get you guys who have been in front of the cameras. We're trying to find an excuse to make sure we don't have you in front of the cameras because it, it gets worse for us every time we got you out there. And white supremacy is taking too many L's out here. People are seeing images of the police authority not just being challenged but being squashed. And that, that becomes habit forming. So now we're going to bring in all these other people. And, you know, this whole thing, this is actually about the police in general. It's not just about black people. It's not about, it's not just about how the police treat black people. Why? This is about the police being armed like the military. And yeah, but they're not talking about punishment. Notice that even if you want to go along, if you're dumb enough to fall for their little scam of, well, this is about the police. And, and well, if we solve police brutality across the board for all people, then that solves it for black people too, right? Even if you were silly enough to go for that, that's not what they're talking about. They're not talking about punishing the police. They're instead saying the same old lies about, well, this is the people, the police need better training. You see, they need better training. And uh, it they need there needs to be more of a focus on community outreach and and well it's about the institutional culture of law enforcement and the emphasis that the society places upon it. In other words, we ain't talking about punishing anybody because punishment is the only thing that works. It's the only thing that's ever worked, and white supremacy knows that, so that's why they want to steer the conversation away from that. And none of the, the clowns who they bring in, you see, at least with most of these black protesters, you have people talking about punishment. Too many of them use the word justice without specifying what justice is. Justice is punishment for the offenders. Harsh punishment, hard punishment. But these new people who they're bringing in, who are not really new at all, the human rights campaign crowd, etc. These guys aren't even talking about that much. They don't even say punishment occasionally. Instead, all they talk about is, oh, we hope if the police would just be nicer and recognize our feelings and our humanity and our feelings and our aspirations. And we, we love this country as much as everyone else and our feelings. And, and that's where they want to go with it. No chance. We are not at all fooled by this PR maneuver that these Minnesota politicians are attempting to pull. We are not at all deceived by this con game of bringing in a professional white butt kisser like Keith Ellison, who long ago decided to bend over and give evil an opening like he's going to do in this case. He intends to make his political bones, and this is about confidence building and trust, all right, but it's mostly about Keith Ellison trying to regain the trust and confidence of the white powers that be. He's trying to calm their anger at him because he dared to associate with a black man who, more often than not, gave the white supremacist heartburn. So Keith Ellison, he'll make his bones over George Floyd's dead body and over the dead bodies of every other black person that he has too. Now, whether or not this ploy is successful will depend entirely on us. We got to call it out and understand. We got to set the terms here. You do not get to say, well, we looked at it and we decided that, that third degree is the best we can do. No, we will bend these bastards to our will and we will break them. I told you that for the longest time, we got to get comfortable bullying white supremacy. And that scared them when they saw the cops getting that work. They were like, man, you're bullying the bullies. 
You're bullying the enforcement arm of white supremacy. Damn right we are. And also Mike Freeman got bullied too. And you know what? It's time to put the arm on Keith Ellison. It's time to put the arm on him because the family of George Floyd, you can see the butter biscuit crumbs on um, his brother's mouth. You can see that. Obviously, Mushmouth Crump has been telling him, Y'all don't want to be out here saying nothing that could be construed as, as causing any problems or all this unrest. No, that, there's some money to be had. We got to keep our eye on the ball. Don't lose sight of the big picture. This is about the money now. There's four of them cops. They work for the city. There could be a huge pay. See, that's how you make them pay. You make them pay out the wallet. I bet you he gave the same speech that Killer Mike gave. Beat up the prosecutors. Yay! At the ballot box. Huh? You know, y'all be, you can, you can go ahead and kill these white supremacists in the wallet. You can kill them in the wallet. That's how you hurt them in the wallet. While they walk the streets free. You see, as long as these white supremacists are not being harshly punished, they are emboldened because as far as they're concerned, the needle ain't moved much. So in their estimation, it wouldn't take very much to move things back to what it was before. That's why these small incremental steps ain't going to do it. It's time for a quantum shift. It's time for the white supremacists not merely to be pushed, but to be crushed. This is war, and when you start the process of destroying your enemy, you destroy him completely. We ain't playing any games with these white supremacists, and we're not playing any games with these black bootlicks who think to themselves that if they just say the right things, right things being vagaries, they can get away with talking around the issue, tiptoeing around it, I'll be as vague and unspecific as possible, and that'll fool you because you'll imagine what it is I'm going to do. No, we ain't doing that. We're going to tell you exactly what it is that we want, and that's what scared them. People are being specific. First degree murder for Derek Chauvin. Second degree murder for his accomplices. That scares them because it's a matter of when you say third, we feel that third degree murder, that, that's what we can get at wrong. Well, his accomplices, you know, we haven't really finished the investigation at wrong. Oh, as far as they're concerned, the tail's wagging the dog. Well, first of all, we ain't dogs. Second of all, we are in charge. Because the white supremacists damn sure aren't. This is about making sure that these bastards learn how to obey us. This is about establishing our authority and taking away theirs. This is an entirely new form of power that black folks need to get comfortable with wielding. When black folks decide that they're tired of trying to curry the favor of the white supremacists and get the dominant society to think well of us, when we decide we don't give a damn about your criticism and we ignore your praise so you cannot flatter us and you cannot shame us, when black folks decide we're going to do what is in our interest, whether you like it or not, in fact, if, if you don't like it, that's probably going to serve as an incentive to us. When black folks do that, we start getting what we want. When you bully white supremacy, the bastards give. But right now, they're trying to test our resolve. They're trying to find out if this pathetic gesture by this tool, Ellison, is going to work. We have to show the bastards that they're dead wrong. We have to show these bastards that we... And only we can define what justice is in this case. Justice is what we say it is. And we say first degree murder. And right off the top of my head, I don't know if Minnesota's got a death penalty, but if it does, Darren Chauvin needs to be on death row, awaiting his date with that needle. And his accomplices should be in a cage for the remainder of their worthless lives. That would be justice. Because the people have said what should be done, and it gets done. That's justice. And no attempts by the white media to try to manufacture some phony baloney controlled opposition mouthpieces to speak for us is going to deter us. And no obstinate white supremacist like Mike Freeman or Amy Klobuchar and no black tap dancing bootlick like Keith Ellison is going to tell us that it's something other than what we want. Justice is what we want, not what they say. 
And so long as they continue to try to find a way to delay and derail justice, then the cities are going to continue to burn.